Okay, good morning. Uh, we're going to begin our study, continue our study on uh, the book, the review of the book of Judges and placing these um, uh, enemies and the judges on a line. And so let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful once again for this new week and the opportunity to open your word together. We're thankful for the things that you teach us and the ways in which you speak to us through your word and through your providences. We're thankful, Lord, for uh, the light that has been shining upon our path. And we just ask, Lord, that as we take time to look at the judges and to examine this light more thoroughly, that you can lead and guide through thy spirit as we draw these upon a line. Be with each person in their personal struggles, in their walk with you, and help us to have clear and understanding minds and open hearts to your word. May you correct us in all the things that we have that are errors, and may we trust that you are continuing to lead. Bring us a conviction and a repentance and a confession that we may walk fully with thee. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning again. And what we had done uh, on Thursday morning is we had uh, more thoroughly sorted out these these lines. I'm going to have to get that camera pointed there. I've got enough light here. I guess I do. Um, so I'm just going to turn that camera on behind me so you can see that a bit better. So what we had done is we had taken 9-11, and we know that it has two different way marks, the arrival of, or the empowerment of the first angel and the arrival of the second. And we had taken these uh, judges, Othniel, Ehud and Shamgar. And we had placed them, um, Othniel being the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, bringing uh, a conviction and an increase of light with the sprinkling of the latter rain that began at 9 11. Uh, with Ehud, we have 2005 and the understanding of the 2520. And with Shamgar, we have a development of the message. Um, that occurs, and, and we have, um, we know Ehud is in the east and Shamgar is in the west, fighting against the Philistines, or the Philistines. And, um, and then we have marked there this period of 2014. So we know, know that um, this is going to be addressing uh, this period of time in which, uh, the 2520 is going to be developed further. So that's that's how I understand um, these first three judges. And we will come back to these things again and sort of re-examine whether these things make sense or not. Now, what we're looking at here is um, Deborah and Barak. And With Deborah and Barak, we had come to understand that this is, and we, we spent a bit of time on this, um, that this is a papal spirit that has come into this movement or a papal teaching. And Jabin, king of Canaan, is going to represent the papacy. And Sisera is going to represent, be represented uh, He's the captain of the host of Sisera. He's going to represent the message that comes from Parminder. And so that we have this papal message come into the movement. Now, in some ways, this begins with 2012, with the false time setting. 
but that false time setting is going to be revived in this movement. Um, so we're going to have to decide how we're going to lay this story out. Now, of course, we have both the story of Deborah and Barak plus the song. So in chapter five, we're going to have the song of Deborah and Barak. And, <clears throat> and we have to sort of go back and remember what we had studied before. Um, so one of the things that we had looked at was this 20 years. So we haven't really addressed this yet. We have the 900 chariots of iron and this 20 years that they're going to oppress the children of Israel. Now, the way that I looked at it, and let's see if I can find this here. Um, probably should have got this all organized. Um, is this the right one? No, that's not it. That's not it either. I have so many different charts. So uh, this one might be the one that I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm going to switch screens here. Let's see if I can make sense out of what's in front of me here because this I had done before. And um, the 20 months that we have here that I'm marking, um, I'm marking uh, lunar months and uh, um, prophetic months. And what you see here is um, 20 months from January 15th, 2018, to September 7th, 2019. So what would I be marking here? What What is this period of 20 months? Anybody know? Why am I marking 20 months here? Wasn't that representative of the 20 years? Okay, so I'm going to take 20 years and I'm going to say it's 20 months. Okay, so I'm going to use a uh, a year, a month for a year or a, a year for a month, however you want to say it. Now, what we had done is we had, um, we know on the sixth day of the sixth month on the biblical calendar, which was September 7th, 2019, uh, the Jeff is going to uh, wake up from his sleep and he's going to recognize the rebellion of Baal Peor, right? Is that how we understand September 7th, 2019? Yeah, that application has been made. Okay. Now we're going to go 20 months back from that. So these are going to be prophetic months. And that's going to bring us to January 15th, 2018. And if we go from September 11th, 2001, and we count, um, I believe here there's 200th, this is the 200th month, is going to be, um, um, so I can't remember, so it's just in the 200th month. It's going to, we, we have January 15th, 2018. So I don't remember how I did all these calculations. Um, but we're also going to have, um, if we do that, if we take that date, the difference between the lunar months and the prophetic months is nine days. So that's going to go to August 29th, 2019. That's when the papal spirit is restored. And we have that as 220 years. Correct? From 1799, 
when a Pope Pius the sixth dies in captivity. And that's right. gonna, that's gonna bring us to August 29th, 2019. So notice we also have 220 months uh, going to, from September 11th, 2001 to September 7th, 2019. And that's um, going to be, um, if I remember correctly, that's prophetic months, but I could be wrong, but I think it is. It would make yeah, sense. it says 30 days right there. Of 30 days. Okay, right. Thanks for pointing out the obvious for me. So, so we have these 220 months of 30 days uh, to September 7th, 2019. And I think that's a pretty significant... <coughs> a pretty significant number in and of itself. Yeah, sorry about that. So the fact that we have 220 prophetic months from September 11, 2001 to September 7, 2019 should be considered significant for this movement. But what we're focused on here is the 20 years as being 20 months. Now, is that a valid... Now, as, as far as the, the 200th month, this is now addressing, instead of trying to figure out how we did this. Because I'm talking about the 200th month from September 11th to January 15th. Um, but from September 11th to September 23rd, uh, 2017, is the 200th lunar month. And so we're dealing with, um, um, I'm actually going from August 22nd, 2001. So I'm not counting, and this has to go back with, our studies that we were doing with uh, the story of Ezra. So we're counting these dates that were, um, um, so it, it's just within that month, it's not to the day, right? So the 200th lunar month would begin on the first day of the eighth month, August 22nd, 2001. So I know this is a little bit convoluted for some people to look at. But the point is, September 23rd, 2017 is the significant date, um, and that's the date that's 777 days before November 9th, 2019. And um, there's more on here. There's 360 months, which are going to go back to November 9th, 1989, um, which is pretty interesting in and of itself, right, to November 9th. Uh, 2019, of course, those are just regular months, but that's going to be uh, 30 times 12. That's why you get 360 months. So we can see that we've already tied a lot of these things together. The point that, that I'm trying to make here without confusing everyone is that this 20 months would refer from this date, and I'm just trying to remember why I have January 15th. That's the thing I don't remember. It's 591 days this 20 lunar months. And I think there was some significance in January 15th, but I don't remember. Um, but this is the period of time. Um, what is the significance there? There was some significance. I just don't remember it. Um, hmm. Anyway, these both bring us back to the same date, is my point. If we go from when Parminder's, when the revival of the papacy occurs, 
that's going to be 20 lunar months brings us back to this date or if we go 20 prophetic months for september 7th it brings us back to this date and well, so uh, january 15th that was i think that was around the time jeff went to brazil no you're thinking about 2019 Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, this is before our time setting. Um, so there, there's something here I just can't remember. I didn't put it here what that was. I mean, even if we don't have right now an event, we can see that there is these 20 months. And this is going to be the time in which this time setting is <coughs> developed by Parminder, right? He's already, they, they have a message that, uh, Tess comes into the movement, right? Uh, they're going to be preparing here in this time. And, and this is a work that Parminder is specifically doing with Tess. And then it's going to culminate on August 29th, 2019. But if we take the August 29th and the September 7th date, and we just count prophetic months and lunar months back from there, they bring us to the same date, January 15th, 2018. So I'm just saying that that 20 years could represent these 20 months. That, that's all I'm saying with this. Now, 20 prophetic years would go from September 11th, 2001 um, to May uh, 29th, 2021. So that would go into our history after Parminder. So, you know, there may be something more that we don't know regarding these 20 years. But what I am saying is that this relates to Parminder's movement. And this is one of the ways in which I've done it. It's rather convoluted. It's not easy to look at. Um, but there are other things in here that tie together. So, uh, you know, we probably have to take some of this as um, you know, it's not it's not 100 percent established, but they are are interesting details that are there. So when we go back and look at this story, then we had looked at this 20 years. Now, we also have 900 chariots of iron. And. Um, this oppression, I mean, what, what do chariots of iron represent? Military power. Okay, military power, right? And, and iron is a type of, um, uh, usually connected with um, the withdrawal of God's mercy, right? Would we agree with that? Mm -hmm. The heaven shall be as iron and the earth shall be as brass. Right? That is, we can't connect to God because the heaven is iron. And then, of course, the earth being brass, it's, it's not going to produce for us. A symbol of Rome? A symbol what? Of Rome? It is a symbol of Rome. Okay, so that's another important point here. It's a symbol of Rome. So we're saying that what's being brought in by Parminder is related to the papacy, to Rome. Now, as far as 900 chariots, what would that possibly represent? I can't remember if we had anything solid about the 900 chariots. I mean, it's 30 times 30. It could relate to the idea that we can use the 30 day lunar months to interpret the 20 years. So 20 lunar months, it could relate to that. The 
anything else. Okay, so I don't know. I don't have anything solid for the 900 chariots themselves, what that would symbolize. And then we're going to have Deborah, who's a prophetess. Now, when we looked at this, we have to decide. I mean, we know that these are messages. And Deborah's a bee. Um, now, she's the wife of Lapidoth. Um, and his name um, refers to torches. So, or a lamp or a flame. So this is a light that comes from Deborah. And she's going to judge Israel. But we know that there's going to be Barak. So she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah. The palm tree is going to represent what? Because what's the city of palm trees? Jericho. Jericho. So if she dwells under the palm tree, she's dwelling under the 2520. So it's a mess message related to the 2520. Um, so Iran has a comment trying to deal with the 900 chariots. Um, so is he's just taking the gematria for 900 chariots? And yeah. when we do the gematria, we get the 20th day of the ninth month. Okay. And uh, that's a significant date. I don't have anything out for it, but I do well, have the 20th day of the ninth month. Yeah, the 20th day of the ninth month is December 25th, 2021. Right. So, why that symbol would be attached to this oppression, uh, it could refer to the strange wives. So that the teaching of Parminder is based upon a message that is going to require a divorce, um, for prophetically, symbolically, from a false message. So she dwells under the palm tree between Rama and Bethel. So uh, Bethel, of course, is the house of God, and Rama. It's different places in Palestine, uh, but it's in Mount Ephraim. So we're going to have Mount Ephraim here. Ephraim, of course, is this double portion, double fruit. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So this message of Deborah is um, a message dealing with the 2520. And it's going to uh, be a message that would respond to uh, this papal spirit that's come into the movement. That is, one of the things that people may not be aware of, people watching this video, is that um, as Parminder was uh, maneuvering to get in position to become the leader of this of FFA, the leader of this movement. Uh, there was a work that was being done in the study of the 2520 that would undermine everything that Parminder was doing. And one of the things Parminder did just before August 29th, uh, 2019, is he repudiated his belief in Leviticus 26 as referring to a duration. And, and the question is, why did he do that? Does anybody know why he would have done that? Uh, I mean, why would that be an advantage to him, to his position?
I mean, it seemed kind of like an odd thing to do if you want to become a leader in the movement to actually just go against one of the major teachings that many people who came into this movement uh, came in because of the 2520. So what was Parminder doing? Do you know why he needed to do that? I think we discussed this before, but I can't remember. Well, very specifically, things that I had been teaching regarding Leviticus 26, and which led to the July 18, 2020 prediction and all these things, they're all tied together. If he could undermine the 2520, it would really undermine all of the light that had come in contradiction to what he was doing. That does make sense. And I do believe that that's exactly what we concluded last time. Yeah. And quite interestingly, this is really the same position that had to be taken by the leaders of FFA on December 6, 2021. Or 2020, pardon me, December 6, 2020. When they made that declaration, they really had to repudiate many of the arguments we had used to support the 2520, the symbolic arguments. So, so we can see here then, um, um, that um, the message of Sisera, the Cicero message is a papal spirit on the one hand in that it's, it's wanting to control, but it also um, has to undermine the foundation. And how is the 2520, the foundation? Well, that, that is what we base the 2520 is how we're able to prove out the 2300 and many other dates that, that we've come up with. It's, it's basically been our go-to source for all of the things that we've come up with just about. Okay. So when Miller came to study the Bible, he began studying in 1816. And he's going to study for a period of two years. In 1818, he's going to he's going to come to what conclusion first? I mean, maybe the, the first thing that he comes to. What does he see prophetically? Is it going to be the 2300 days? Uh, no, it was it was the 2520, wasn't it? It was the 2520. And if he hadn't seen the 2520, could he have seen the 2300 days? No, that was it. Because 2300 cut off the 2520. It's a portion that's been cut off. Right. So it's a portion of the 2520. That's right. Yeah. So he needs to see the 2520. Otherwise, is no anchor for the 2300 days. And even that's the good analogy. And even the 1335, he has... You know, he, these are the commencements that he has of the chain of truth. And Ellen White says God gave him the commencement for the tr chain of truth. That's, That's going right. to be 677, um, 508, and um, uh, 457, right? So he's going to have these three dates that are given him as the commencement of the chain of truth. Right. So, so these are something given by God. And so the 2520 uh, is, is foundational it, because it comes from Miller's rules. Um, and then we have, uh, she, she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? So, why is she calling Barak? What, 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 how did we understand this when we studied this? 
Because she's asking this sort of rhetorical question, hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded? Well, wasn't Barak uh, the one that was was told to do this first? And he said, no, um, <laughs> not me. It's got to be somebody else. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, so she knows that he's been called, but he's not doing anything, right? All right. Um, so, so they're working together, these two messages. So if we're going to look at these as messages, the 2520, um, the message of the 2520, that's going to be the message of Deborah. At least this is the way we're looking at it right now. She's going to call this other message that's going to defeat Sisera, Right. Right. And and we spent a bit of time looking at the 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali <laughs> and of the children of Ze Zebulun. Now, why was this Naphtali and Zebulun important? So we have to go back and kind of remember what was happening. It was the, wasn't it the number of the children before the crossing or at the crossing? Yeah, so it's the number of these tribes, right? Now, when it came to Zebulun, uh, this was Odilio, uh, really was the one who first looked at this, right? So, but we were doing this at the same time. So we have some work that it, Odilio is doing, um, dealing with, uh, um, July 18th, he's now reviewing this, and I'm bringing up the chart here. So he, he does this calculation. He takes the number of the tribe of Zebulun, and he counts 57,400 days each day for um, one of the men of war from the tribe of Zebulun in the census. And he's going to count back from July 18, 2020 to May 23rd, 1863. That's the Sabbath in which the Adventist church becomes the Adventist church. And so this is quite significant. Now, he does this as part of this study dealing with the falling of the stars and the dark day and the Lisbon earthquake, right? The tokens yeah. are bingers and signs. So we're, we're not going to go into detail uh, of this. I'm missing a comma up here. Um, <clears throat> so, so I start looking at this, and I start to see that there is some structure here that he didn't notice. And he was just showing how all of these are using symbols that we can attach to July 18th. So I'm not going to go through all of these different numbers, but he takes these actual dates in history and, and looks at these numbers of days and, and figures out these different symbols that we can then attach to, to this. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Naphtali and I'm gonna count um, from the falling of the stars. Now, we had, of course, first the Lisbon earthquake, then the dark day, and then we have the falling of the stars in 1833. And we're going to have um, it bring us to, to 19, 1980. So if we're going to count Naphtali, so he has Zebulun, uh, but it's going to bring us to January 27th, 1980. Now, it's not going to bring us to the day of this event, but 197 days prior which is going to be uh, the falling of the stars that occur during um, uh, Glacier View. So Glacier View is going to go from, I believe, August 10th, 1980 to August 15th, 1980. That's Desmond Ford when he's going to be examined and defrocked, right? Mm -hmm. Um, now, there's significant significance for me there personally because the falling of the stars that occur on August 11th, 1980, I witnessed them. And that was the day of my conversion. 
but it's it's the Perseid meteor shower, and that's the most spectacular Mer Perseid meteor shower um, in modern times uh, that has been recorded. And I saw it at its height, and and that happens to be fourteen thousand five hundred and eighty seven days before July 18, 2020. So we can tie Zebulun and Naphtali together to um, these events, the falling of the stars, as well as, um, because that's what he's going to address, but also he's going to address the, the beginning of the Seventh-day Adventist church. So there's probably more here than we've we've been able to uncover, but that's what we have here. And um, we also began looking at the numbering of the tribes. So one of the things we noted that if we went from not just the 1863, but we went from 1888 to the last day of the General Conference, because he's going to the last day of the General Conference in 1863, right? That's what Odilio is doing to count to July 18th. But if we go from the last day of the General Conference in 1888, that's November 4th, 1888, and we use the tribe of Reuben, it's 46,500 days to Parminder's ordination on February 27th, 2016. And that's going to be 1,279 days before Parminder's rebellion. Right, so there's a bunch of details here on this chart that are sort of extraneous for our study here. All right. But what we can say is that these numberings of these tribes of Israel can relate to um, Zebulun and Naphtali. This, and it's the, it's the fact that when we were studying this, Odilio comes out with this study. So it's not something that, you know, we found out way before or we found out way later. It's happening at the same time. So we look at this, and then we look at Reuben. And so we can see that Reuben... Um, is his number of number of his tribe is going to symbolize an event which is Parminder's ordination. So we can see then that just giving us Zebulun and Naphtali, that when this is given here, if if this if we had done this study, you know, a year from now, or you know, even three months later, or three months before, the significance of what we just looked at in verse six would not have clicked right it, it wouldn't have the same meaning i, I don't so think here, it would have right so here we have a key that comes to us and it's just the numbering of the tribes of israel and so god gives this to us this naphtali and this zebulun um so that we can then look at what this means in regard to Parminder and his ordination. So, so I think it's it's quite profound. Uh, but it yes, is. <laughs> it points it it right. points to these things as uh, mm -hmm. God has all these things in His hands. Yeah. Now we spent time with the ten thousand. Now the only thing that we could uh, gather from the ten thousand, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and I'm see if I can find it though. That's the other question. I, I probably didn't even draw it in there, but um, when we go to the calendar converter, and we're going to we're going to count ten thousand. Ten thousand is about how many years? Ten thousand days. Yeah, so it's it's going to be twenty seven years and and a bit, right? Twenty seven point three. Yeah, twenty seven point three. So, what's the significance of twenty seven point three? Third month, twenty seventh day. Okay, it's twenty seventh day of the third month. Okay. Anything? Isn't that also the number of Levites? Yes, it's the number of the Levites. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, now, Iran and I have been dealing with this for a little bit, so some people may have seen some of the things there on um, posted on WhatsApp. Um, but the two seven point three, I mean, that's the length of a sidereal month. That is, if we take the month not as as observed by uh, the what we call the synodic month but just how many times the the moon goes around the earth how many days it takes that's 27.3 days but it also deals with uh uh circles and squares and this comes from our study of triangles but we can see here then 10,000 being 27.3878 days um that this would represent part of our message dealing with the message to the Levites at the very least, right? Okay, so I, I don't know if we noticed that last time though. <laughs> I'm sorry, notice what again? Um, we noticed that it was 27.3 years. Or yeah, we had noticed something else that that's and I can't remember what else I'd noticed. I noticed I'd counted it from some date and I and I um, if I remember correctly, I counted it from November 9th, 1989. So let me just do that. Oh, yeah, and that brings us to March 27th, 2017. Uh, so it, it, it produces also uh, the two from seven. What if I go from November 9th, 1989, and I count 10,000 days, it brings us to March 27th, 2017. But that didn't that didn't did that play in with the twenty seven point three years? Yes. <laughs> November ninth. So if we count from November ninth, nineteen eighty nine, it's twenty seven point three years, right? Okay. As as a symbol. Um, but if we just count ten thousand days, so it's going to bring us to March 27th, 2017. Right? right? Right. So it produces the same symbol two different ways. Check and check, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, so there's, there's something significant in that alone. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I know there was other things I did with the 10,000. And we spent, we did a study on the 10,000, and I don't remember all the, what we drew from that completely. That was Dwight leading out in that. Um, but we could see it's a symbol. It's a common symbol that occurs in scripture. And so, so here we can address it to the message to the Levites. Now, bringing us to 2017, this is, this is actually quite important because it's part of another structure. And, and I remember now a little bit more about it, but um, in 2017, this, that year is the center of this um, 777 chiasm. That is, there's two periods of 777 days, starting with the Mayan calendar, um, uh, turning over, right? December 21st, 2012, and also the 777 days from September 23rd, 2017 to, and to November 9th, 2019, and then, of course, the 777 days to December 25th, 2021. So, again, a lot of numbers here, but uh, March 27th, 2017 is part of this structure. And um, I'm not going to go into that because that's just too much because this is a review. The main thing that we want to see here is that this is tying into this history that we are involved in. 
and it's a history that Parminder is involved in, right? He's there in the midst of what is happening in, the, in that time. So in some ways, Parminder comes in 2012, right? And, you know, there's, it's going to be addressed in the beginning of 2012. When we get to the end of 2012, we have uh, the 13th back tune, whether, however you count it, it's, um, you know, it's, it's the dividing line. And this is this period of rebellion that is represented by this time setting that we're in. And, and it, it is a type of rebellion because Parminder has set in motion time setting. But it's going to be based upon false pr principles. And God is going to give us time setting as a witness against Parminder and a witness that he is leading this movement. Yeah, this makes sense. Now, this message then of Sisera has to be a message regarding July 18th. Sorry, I'm coughing. Well, we're starting to see all these connections with the tribe numbers and the July 18th and the, the other dates that we have associated with them, the 47,000 days and on and on. Yeah. So it, it, it does lend credence to what you're saying. Now, so then a Deborah saying, um, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kaishan, to the river Kaishan. Uh, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, at, with his chariots and his multitude, and will deliver him into thine hand. So Sisera is going to be defeated by this message of Barak. And it's going to be the message of Deborah that will draw thee to the river, or will draw unto thee to the river, Kaishan, Sisera. So how would we take this? We have this message of Deborah, which is the 2520. And it, this message is going to draw this other message, which we're going to say is Parminder's message, the message of Sisera, into this trap. Right. And it is because he's falling into it. He's He has already spoke against the 2520, which is the witness against him, right? Well, he doesn't speak against the 2520 at first. He uses the 2520. Well, you yeah, but we were talking about it later, later yeah. when he was getting ready to, uh, how shall we say, take the mantle from Jeff. Right. So he's going to start undermining all kinds of truths that have come into this movement, which, if accepted, would totally undermine what he's saying. So he has right. to destroy these truths. Makes sense. I wonder if he saw it like that. I'm <laughs> sure he did. I think Parminder knew what he was doing. That uh, That's the way I, I, I take that you uh, feel like is, I mean, because I'm depending on how you felt about him because I wasn't exposed to him in any way, shape, or form. He also told us later that he had been planning this. For yeah. Oh, I mean, that's right. I remember he, that. Yeah, he was, you know, deceptive. He had to be deceptive. But we also had him lie to us personally about all kinds of things that, and, and these things were meant to, um, others. well, to put us at ease about what he was doing. Oh, so, and he lied to Jeff too, right? I mean, Jeff would talk to him straight and he would just lie to Jeff's face about what he said or what he was teaching. And um, so, so yeah, this was going on, this, all this duplicity. Um, 
Now we have the river Kaishan. We haven't really, I don't think, fully developed uh, what this is. We know that the river Kaishan means winding. Um, and of course that could uh, represent to some degree um, a trap, right? So this is what it could mean. But it also does represent uh, Parminder's teachings. So he's trying to set a trap. He's got a winding message. Uh, but we're going to basically trap him in his trap. With, with the message of July 18th. So Barak said unto her, if thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Now, again, we can look at this story. Barak just, he needs to have Deborah with him, right? Um, and, and that would be true of the message of July 18th. Is the message of July 18th an independent message? No. No. And and there's nothing about the message of July 18th that was trying to uh, undermine anything that went before. It was actually based upon understanding those things, that we ended up with July 18th in the first place. But even from my personal point of view, I was not willing to promote July 18th if the movement had not promoted it. I was still going to study it discuss it with Odilio and Stephen. But I wasn't, because the movement had put a stop to it, I wasn't going to, I was going to leave that in God's hands. I mean, obviously I believed it was true, but I believe that God can take care of his own truth. And, and just because something's true doesn't mean it necessarily has to be promoted to every person. I mean, why God gave us this understanding of July 18th, at first I had no idea. Because the truth stands on its own. Right. right. So, you know, I mean, Heidi and I were personally shut down, and July 18th was uh, shelved, and, uh, you know, I thought possibly we might not hear anything about it. But if it was important, God would make it prominent in the movement, which it did. So Angela says, Judges 4, 7, the 4, 7 times, I'm trying to read what she's saying here. Um, in Leviticus 26, a trap for Parminder. And see, Parminder was the champion of the 25, 24 time, right? Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it went against what his principles were. So he uses things just like a Jesuit would, uh, to his advantage, but can easily discard them uh, when they're not to his advantage. Um, so this message of July 18th goes hand in hand with the message of the 2520. It's basically uh, the result of all this study that came from the 2520 led to this. I agree. And, and definitely from my perspective, going through how I came to understand the things that I did, it was starting with understanding the chronology to support the 2520. Did it, was it real or not? And, and that's where everything came, Ezekiel, all of these different things, which led us to understanding these structures and patterns and then finding these things in our history. So... It was just a direct result of this. Everything fell into place. Yeah, everything fell into place. That was the thing that was so amazing about it. Yes. Was it was like you didn't have to orchestrate anything. No, you just study things and, and it was just like you it started you just, coming out. Yeah. It it was bizarre. Uh, you know, no, me, it wasn't. It was miraculous. It was miraculous. Yes. It yeah, was it was a miracle. It was not bizarre. It was miraculous. Okay. That's very accurate. Thank you. Yeah. It's like saying something's lucky when it's actually just providence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, and she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, 
for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Now, I mean, I've taken this a few different ways. So one is I have taken this sort of personally um, in that, um, that this is, this message of July 18th was not meant to be for uh, any person's honor. But also for the movement itself, we can see that the movement itself, it wasn't for its honor in giving this message of July 18th. So selling, um, so the Lord's going to sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. A woman would be a church, right? Or at least the movement. But it's going to be not those that promote July 18th. However, that, that is, the woman could represent the church at large, God's church. How, how would we take this? Why is it that um, Barak doesn't get any honor for this? And, and for me, it was just the fact that... Um, I'm not going to promote July 18. The movement promotes it, right? Yes. But there's different ways I could look at this, and I'm not really sure what the right way is, because you know people aren't being represented here directly. But people are being represented. But people are represented in the sense that they're tied to a message. Right. And so I am tied to July 18th more than anyone else. Uh, yes. <laughs> You know, and, and, and things like, you know, my conversion being 14,587 14, days before July 18th, which is the same number of days that the manna fell. Things right. like that, which are just kind of miraculous. Miraculous. There we okay. go. That's the word. <laughs> but, but this isn't about people. This is about a message. Yes. So the message of July 18th. It's not going to be to its honor. This is for the honor of, of this woman that is going to slay Sisera. And then this becomes a little more involved as well, because now we have another other people involved. And are these messages specifically? What are they? Mm. Well, we have in verse 10, Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. So what, again, was the coup de grace for Parmender? Um, I don't know what coup de grace is. You know, the, the death blow, the, 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 um, the thing that, that put him over. Well, it's a, it's a spike here that's going to be put right as temples, which we're considering as a message still. Yeah, I think it would have to be a, a specific message. Yeah. Now we're saying this is the message of July eighteenth that that's here, but there is some other part of a message, and um, I would say it's the structure dealing with September seventh. And, and here's how I understand it. So I'm following the movement. I accept that Jeff passed the, the ministry, the movement to, to Parminder. Right? Right. Not, not everybody did, but I accepted that, even though I didn't know what was going on. And, and definitely I knew that July 18th was not being accepted by Parminder, but I thought he might accept it. Stephen was more, Stephen was more hopeful than I was. Um, <clears throat> um, but it wasn't until Jeff on September 7th um, woke up and did his presentation that I did a calculation. Now, I'd done a calculation on October 13th when I was at Lambert Church. 
I wasn't at Lambert Church on September 7th, uh, 2019, but I was in Warburg Church, and I was listening to Jeff. Wasn't the, that the 187 um, number that you came up with? Well, so on October 13th, I had counted 391.5 days to November 9th, of course. Right. And now on, on September 7th, I noticed that it was um, 63 days to November 9th, and September 7th is the seventh day of the ninth month, so that's 9 times 7 is 63. But I also noticed something else. From September 7th, if I counted back to October 13th, the center date was March 27th. March 27th, 2019 was the center. Now, March 27th, 2019 is the first time I have this March 27th date. Um, that's, you know, we have the March 27th, 2021, but now I have March 27th, 2019. We're going to get March 27th, 2020 is the center of that. But here, for me, this was the thing that exposed Parminder. This is what made my decision, whether other people understood it or not. I understood that Jeff standing up on September 7th was part of a structure. And we found this structure later. We okay. had the, the two, 126 days divided into 63 and 63. Well, here we found the first 63. Jeff's going to find the next 63 ending on January 11th, 2020 as part of this, uh, I think he calls it uh, the Levitical chiasm, right? And, and he's also going to tie it to March 23rd as well, 2021. He's going to tie that by counting um, the number of days. And there's a whole bunch of things involved in this study, right, that gives us all kinds of witnesses to this structure, that is both the, uh, the dates in in American or in European way of fashioning them. They give us this, these, the beginning and the end date that Jeff has there. So I'm not going to go through those diagrams right now, but the point is it was Jeff on September 7th and the chronology attached to that, that really put an end to Parminder because now it gave us a strong witness not just to the fact that Jeff was correct, but also that we have this whole structure. And that whole structure has continued to unfold. Without that structure, we wouldn't know if we're on the right track or not. And, so and we, this is another turning point? Yeah, it's it's a turning point and it and it's also I think the thing that gave the impetus for July 18th in the first place, because of that September 7th paper that I wrote, um, I think that's what gave Jeff the confidence to revive July 18th. Now, people don't know what happened behind the scenes there, but I, I published this paper on September 7th. And in that paper, because I had just written it on September 7th, um, I was just figuring out what was happening. And I was being kind of generous towards Parminder in that paper, if anybody's ever read it. And, and Jeff was sort of taken aback by that because I was sympathizing with some of Parminder's complaints. And I had to apologize to Jeff uh, for that. I had to take um, responsibility for opinions I didn't really have, but I apologized for the language that I used in that paper. And um, so he had obviously read it. And um, so it's only after that that Jeff's going to pick up July 18th. So I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't written that paper or if I hadn't apologized to Jeff. I'm not sure what would have happened with July 18th. But, th but that's what was happening behind the scenes. So I think, and we never looked at this before um, when we were studying this, but if we're going to take take this, it would have to be um, 
this new character that's introduced. Um, now, Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, right? And so we're going to have this, um, and this becomes rather involved, but one of the things that we dealt with here, uh, we have a symbol 411. So I'm going to go into just some personal things here. So now Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent in the plain of Zanim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Obinuim, was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up for this day in which the Lord hath delivered hath delivered Sisera into thy hand. Is not the Lord gone up before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. So we're going to see this, this whole story. And it's going to be uh, Jael who went out to meet Sisera, right? So we know Jael is the wife of Heber, right? Is that how we understand this, right? Right. So we have Heber the Kenite mentioned here. He's introduced in chapter 4, verse 11. Now, 411 is, is a symbol that's attached um, uh, to this movement in a number of ways. Not everybody's aware of them. But one of the things is it's also Heidi's birthday. Right. So that's April 11th. And it's a symbol of information. So there's other places I'm not going to go into the detail here but I also look at the word tent he pitched his tent and we had gone through this before um, what this meant so the word tent is the number 168 and 168 is the number of hours in a week but it also if you take 168 and you multiply it by 77 you get my home address that I grew up at so when I was a child, that house I lived in was 12936. And so 168 times 77 is 12936. So what this says is that this message dwells with something that I specifically am doing. And that's going to be the September 7th um, study. Now, it, right, I it, remember us discussing this. Yeah. Now, the other thing, too, just from a personal point of view, Heidi was not on the side of Parminder while I was in that interim period, right? You already saw what the problem this? August 29th. Of what year? 2019, when Parminder had his, um, the woman with the, Oh, yeah, the no. pants. So, so Heidi never bought into it, but I was, uh -uh. I, was not. I was leading in a bit different direction. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how we would take, you know, the wife of Heber, uh, but we can at least use it symbolically. Yes. Uh, and so how would we use the wife of Heber symbolically as a message? If Heber the Kenite represents a message that comes from me, would this be those that are accepting that message? In a sense, a church. <clears throat> because there are going to be people who accept the message because of my position. I don't know if that's the best way to look at it or not. Because it, it starts to get quite, quite personal in, 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 in my personal involvement here, but I'm definitely involved. Yes. It, 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 well, you, I think that we've discussed this enough to see those things and um, why can't we continue on seeing those things? So uh, the message might be your wife. She wasn't, uh, wasn't too hip to uh, Parminder at that point. Yeah, so we're going to have Heber... And 
and we did some study into Heber, as he's mentioned earlier. Right. So we're not going to go through that study now again, but I we. Had, that was when I started having suspicions that something was wrong with he was up to something. Yeah. But I was still oblivious to it until Jeff spoke and I did the chronology. Because for me personally, it was the chronology that convinced me more than anything else. And the personal temptation for me was my dad had died in 2018. And Parminder was teaching very much like my dad believed. So the type of dispensationalism Parminder was using was not evangelical dispensationalism. It was more a type of liberal dispensationalism. And so I was considering, was my dad correct? All through this time that I saw Parminder, what he was doing. So, so there was a part of me that was emotionally tied to what Parminder was doing. I, I could see the logic of it because I grew up with it. I knew there was also an, a rejection of the word of God because the idea that Parminder was teaching is Ellen White is in a different dispensation and she just understands things the way that she understands them, right? So she's still led by God, but she's ignorant. We, we're progressing through these different dispensations. We're more enlightened as we go through history. We can look at the facts and, and say that that's wrong, that, that opinion of her well, she, she we can see that she can see well into the future i understand that and and that's but we would see that she sees into the future in this type of thinking but she was just wrong about things like how old the earth was right i remember in um this is in 2019 it would be in june when uh tess was in alberta speaking and she was talking about how there's not going to be a sunday law and I was saying, okay, you know, like I can see what you're saying. You know, it's going to be a different issue in our day. I wasn't fully understanding everything where she was going. But I understood the one logical thing. With what she was saying, I asked her the question, do we still believe in a literal creation 6,000 years ago? And because I knew that if you are going to take the position she was on how you interpret spirit of prophecy. You would just have to dismiss all kinds of things that Ellen White says. And you could you can dismiss the Bible writers because they just didn't know any better. Right. Well, that's and, a humanistic way of looking at things. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's the way I grew up. So I understood the logic of it. Now, I also understood the problems with it, but I was considering it. Right. I was reconsidering all the things that I had ever believed based upon what Parminder was teaching and what Ted That must have been a tough time for you. Well, yes, it was a very difficult time. Um, but, you know, these are things I think about all the time. I always like, examine everything. Um, but I, I tried to look at the whole framework and thought, does this make sense? And so it was this chronology, though, because once I saw the chronology, I, I could not take the position that I could have a completely false system of study that's going to um, illustrate all of these things that are happening. Either the chronology is correct or it's in error. Mm -hmm. Right. It can't be both correct and in error. Yeah. And so that helped me wake up to my senses of what was really happening. But in a sense, I was under that spell. And I was under that spell because of what had happened to me emotionally. I mean, what we had been through. So, you know, I mean, we were absolutely, um, because of being in Arkansas, I mean, we were poor. We were more than poor. We had absolutely nothing. Um, so, you know, our life was devastated because of our commitment to this movement. Um, so, you know, our whole world had really fallen apart. And, you know, 
my dad having passed away was emotional for me as well. So now I have to evaluate where everything was going. So that's what I'm saying as far as this uh, JL and um, Heber the Kenite. To me, that really has to be um, what happened on September 7th, 2019. Well, it makes sense. I mean, it, 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 uh, all of these things, how um, we, we've seen how Jeff was tied to this. We've seen how Parminder's been mm-hmm. tied with this. We see how you've been tied with this. There's, these things are not to us, uh, to, well, to me, um, it's, it's not that it was expected, but, you know, uh, yeah. I've taken it to the fact of, okay, I can, I can agree with this. Well, and, and I say that, you know, all the people in the movement who are, are choosing to follow God, and even the ones that aren't, we're all tied to this, right, in various ways, structurally, in different events that we've taken a part in, right? So, you know, we're all fulfilling prophecy. We're all part of fulfilled prophecy. So, so that's that's where we're at when it comes to understanding this history of Parminder. He's going to be taken down by chronology and a very specific pointed chronology that's going to unfold as we go through uh, this movement presently. And, and it's still unfolding. And it's giving witness that God is leading us uh, but it's not giving us the ability to predict the future. So I'm, I'm not going to go into detail about this whole story because there's lots to it. But I do want to focus up on this nail. So when we look at a nail, a pin, a peg, can we say that that is September 7th, 2019? It's a way mark. Yeah, it's it's a way mark. Now, it's a very specific one um, in that it's part of a structure. It's where I'm measuring the time because I'm counting how many days it had been since, since October 13th. And um, it's going to uh, tie us to some other symbols of nails, right? So we know that there's this nail in the shirt sure place, in the sanctuary. Got Isaiah 2222. Um, uh, we have the message to Philadelphia. We have this nail. We've looked at the nail before. Um, and we have this tent, right? The nail of the tent. So the tent here representing the week, because the number of hours in a week, 168 hours in a week. So this represents time, and of course it represents, for me personally, um, you know, my home address, it symbolizes that. So, so what does this then mean if we're going to, um, and she took a hammer in her hand, right? Isn't the seven attached to it if it's a 168? Yeah, well, se- seven, so it's a week, and if you multiply the number of hours in a week by 77, you get my home address, right? So you have this symbol, and a tent is a home, right? Correct. Right, so, um, and then you has in her hand, and remember we have that 327 with the word hand that we looked at in our other studies. So this is the message to the Levites. And, and right. Jeff is actually... Power. Put, and Jeff is actually going to use, because he's going to count 126 days from t- September 7th, 2019 to January 11th. And then he's going to count 441 days to March 27th. Or is, how's it go now? Is it 320? I can't remember. Yeah. So he's going to go to March 27th, 2021 from... Um, from January 11th, 2020. And and he's going to use the number 327 to represent March 27th. 
but it's 441 days and 441 days is what? 63 weeks, right? So he's going to have 66 days to November 9th from September 7th and then 63 days to January 11th, 2020. And then he's going to count 63 weeks to March 27th, 2021, part of the structure of the 777 uh, period of time. And then we're going to count the dates, right? And they're going to add up to um, 327. And then we're going to count them in reverse order, and they're going to add up to January 11th. Right, so we're going to have all of these witnesses to this structure. But that all comes from September 7th. Okay, so now then Barack is going to pursue Cicero. I think that's nailed down. Okay, and um, and Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came unto her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. And God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin the king of Canaan. So this is a promise we have to this movement regarding this papal spirit that it will be ultimately defeated. Now, so what we're going to be doing then is we put this on the line. So I just want to finish this off here. Um, so I'll stop the share, switch cameras. So this is going to bring us all the way here now to 2019, but it's really this span that we're going to have to address as far as Parminder. Um, so this is going to be, we'll call it Sisera, right? So Sisera, that's going to be that, that enemy. And then this, the deliverer is going to come here. Right? So we're going to have Deborah and Barack. But also we have JL. And so JL specifically, probably we would just put as September 7th, 2019. Yeah, because it is its own way, Mark. Yeah. You don't put the 7th, you just put September. Okay, so there we have <coughs> that way mark. And, and De Deborah and Barack are a message through here. We can actually really put this message uh, even back in 2018 because we could probably just take this whole thing and make it this structure here from October 13th. Well, we would even go back further. We would go, this is 2018. And you have that 126 days from June 9th, right? And then you also have uh, another 126 days here um, going to January 11th, 2020, right? And these are going to be divided into 63. And so this structure here, uh, this comes from Samuel Snow's letters. So we're going to actually find Samuel Snow's letters line up with this. There's all kinds of detail here. But this is the message of Deborah and Barak. It's this message addressing all of this structure. But JL specifically is the September 7th, 2019 date. So we're actually putting the the midnight cry in here as well is that what i'm is that what i'm seeing yeah 
Yeah, so there's there's a bunch in there. I'm just not going to go through all the details. Anyway. There is a lot there, and I think we could even add more to it. Um, yes. Well, definitely we could add more to it, because there's, there's way more that we haven't even addressed here. What I want to look at is the general idea, because that's what we're trying to do is do this review. Yes, I agree. Okay. Now, um, so the song of Deborah and Brack, I mean, I, I don't know if we need to go through that again. I mean, there's obviously lots of things that we would notice now that we wouldn't have noticed in the past. Um, but we did go through this. It's not going to give us um, anything that's going to change what we have here. Uh, it's just going to give us more witnesses. But the next one is going to be the Midianites oppressing Israel, and that's going to be Gideon. And so then we have to try to understand how that addre is addressed. And, and that's going to be pretty clear. We're going to see that this is going to relate to the history of this movement in regard to uh, the proclamation of the warning for Nashville. Oh, I've got to switch my microphone. Sorry about that. Right. So, so we're going to see that this, there's this difference here. Um, when we, when we get rid of Parminder, this movement is now going to have a different enemy, which we're going to have to identify a message. And that's going to be Gideon. And Jeff, of course, ties Gideon to the proclamation of July 18th. So, so we're going to look at that uh, tomorrow. Any, any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, well, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we're so very thankful for all the things that you have been doing in our lives and um, for the time that we have had to study. We pray that you can be with us as we think about these things and bring us together again uh, to study these things. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.